In this video, we're going to be looking at plant hormones and growth. So let's just get straight into it. Right here, we have four pictures that are going to matter a lot. Okay, so let me just put them here. A sun, some chemicals, water, and gravity. Gravity because that's a little apple falling from a tree. Okay, so obviously right here, we have a plant. It's got a lot of roots. It's got a, um, nice leaves and a strong stem, right? Now... We're talking about growth. So what effects, why do plants grow out of the soil? Why? Have you ever noticed if you have your uh, plant in a, in a um, pot, maybe you don't have one, so maybe you won't understand this, but if you have a plant in a pot and it's, and it's like in the middle of your room, you'll notice it will grow towards your window for some reason. It does that because it wants to get optimal sunlight for photosynthesis. So... Not only does your plant grow, it grows with intention. It grows to a specific place on purpose. So this is called tropism. So tropism is growth towards a stimulus. Okay, so some examples are these I put here. So for example, the sun, light. Light is a stimulus. It doesn't have to be the sun. If you do an experiment and you just put a light, you'll notice the plant will grow towards that light. Okay, so this is called phototropism because it's growing towards um, uh, the, sun, the light, phototropism, okay? Now, the next one is chemicals. So we know why phototropism matters. That's so you can get enough light for the plant to get enough photosynthesis. The next one is chemicals. Sometimes, um, for example, let's take the root. It needs to reach appropriate chemicals so it can absorb it, so the plant can use it. If it just grows randomly without to um, intention and without... Um, growing towards the best possible place um, it will not be growing as as effectively as it possibly could so this is called chemotropism notice they all have tropism meaning growing towards a specific thing so this time it's chemical chemo okay so this could be minerals um, glucose or many things that it wants to absorb okay whatever it is next we have hydrotropism hydro means water so just like that the soil is smart in that it can sense where water is and then grow towards that hydrotropism next gravity why does why does soil grow into the roots why not just like the rest of the plant grow into the sky the reason is because gravity geotropism is growing towards earth geo means earth and earth is we're standing on earth so growing deep into the earth this geotropism is just following gravity this is important because we want our roots to anchor the plant deep into the soil. Not only that, we want the roots to go as deep as possible to be able to find everything it can, all the water, all the nutrients, okay? It's very important that the root grows down. Now, not only does the, um, do these, um, does the plant grow towards these things, okay? It can also have a negative response. So it can have both a positive, meaning it grows towards these things, or it can have a negative response, meaning it grows away from, um, from these things. So there are some scenarios where um, the plant may, for example, sometimes there's chemicals that the plant wants to avoid. So it may actually grow, um, it may have a negative response and grow away from it instead, okay? So bear in mind, it can be both positive and negative. Okay, most likely if it's positive, it means the plant wants it. If it's negative, the plant doesn't want it. Now, another thing you need to know is something called nastic responses. Nasty. Okay, nastic responses doesn't really mean anything to do with nasty. Okay, so don't think nasty, like disgusting, is going to help here. Maybe it does, but somehow I don't think it's going to help. So a nastic response is a response by a plant um, to a certain stimulus but it doesn't cause the plant to go towards the stimulus so all of these stimuluses sun chemicals water and, and gravity cause the plant to grow away or towards it okay a nastic response is um, a stimulus that causes a plant to do something but not necessarily um, um, uh, a reaction that goes towards the stimulus or away from the stimulus you'll see what i mean so for example Let's say uh, we don't have a sun, okay? The, uh, the rose will fold itself up, right? Um, but as soon as the sun comes out, the rose opens up. So this is an example of a nastic response. The rose isn't opening up towards the sun or away from the sun. It's just opening up. It's just a, 
um, yes or no response, okay? A nastic response is just a yes or no response. It doesn't go towards or away the stimulus. So photonasty response is a type of nastic response. Photo, again, remember that, referred to sunlight. So a photonasty response is a response like this one that I just demonstrated. The light stimulates the, the, the flower to open up. Another kind of um, nastic response that you may be familiar with is touch. So there are plants that exist that if you, if, you, if you don't touch them, they're relaxed and they open up. And then as soon as you go towards and touch them, they, they close up immediately. Okay, that's another kind of nastic response. Okay, it didn't go away or towards you. It just had a response, a yes or no response. In this case, this one was light and the other one I mentioned was touch. Now, next, we're going to talk about specifically uh, phototropism. Okay. You need to know about this one. These, not so much. You don't really need to know anything beyond what I just said. But phototropism, you do. So, how? I'm going to be explaining why the plant grows towards sunlight. Why it does that? The key lies here in the apical meristem. The apical meristem is the um, top part of the stem of a plant that is where growth occurs from. The growth happens from here, okay? So, if there's a sun this part is going to decide to grow towards the sunlight to optimize photosynthesis to get to as much exposure to light as possible. So let me show you. So here we have the apical meristem. So we zoomed in to this little part here, okay? Now, normally, let's say the sun is right above this apical meristem, right above, right above the plant. What you'll notice is what causes um, the apical meristem to grow is something called growth regulating substances growth regulating substances okay an example is something called auxin okay auxin okay auxin is this blue molecule so i made this blue to match with the blue little molecule auxin is in the meristem and it controls growth wherever auxin is growth will happen so notice notice if the sun is right above the meristem auxin is distributed everywhere evenly Okay, it's everywhere. It's not in one particular place. So wherever light is, oxen, um, like basically if light is right above, each cell gets equal exposure to light. And whichever cells get exposed to light, oxen will move away from. Okay, so if all these cells get exposure to light, oxen will not really um, want to be in those areas. It will move away. Okay, it will move away just like this. It will move away from those cells. So these cells will grow in an even manner. All these cells will grow, okay? Not one side more than the other, okay? So this is very important. So light is very important in stimulating oxen to full growth. But what happens now is interesting. If the sun is not on top, so say it's rising in the morning, okay? Um, and it's from the angle, it's from an angle. What happens is um, the cells will be stimulated by this light. And what will happen is now, um, something called, let me show you here. Something called auxin efflux pumps and pin proteins. These two will transport all the auxin to one side of the plant, the opposite side from where the light is. So light inhibits auxin, okay? So wherever there is no light, auxin will go. So right now, the sun is shining here. So these two things, auxin efflux pumps, because they pump it away. And these pin proteins are going to work to, you don't need to know much detail about these, you just need to know their names. These two will work together and serve as the polar auxin transport. Okay, these two do something called polar auxin transport. And it sends the auxin the opposite place of where the sun is. So it's going to send all this auxin to the dark side of the, of the Mary stem. Now, auxin, as we said before, stimulates growth. So now that this side has all the auxin, it's going to stimulate growth, okay? But not only growth, it's also going to stimulate something else, okay? It's going to stimulate um, growth, but through two ways. How? So how does it do it? It does it through two ways, cell division and cell enlargement. So one, the cells will become more, that's cell division. Two, the cells will become bigger. Now, what do you think is going to happen if these cells become more and bigger, whereas these cells stay the same? They don't change shape. 
you can imagine something like this is going to happen. These, the, these will cells will get bigger, more, and it will bend the, 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 the plant towards the light. So let me bring the sun here. It will bring the plant towards the sunlight. Just like this. Okay, now how exactly did auxin stimulate this to happen? How? The answer is through genes. We know um, each cell um, expresses different genes, okay? Each, each of your cells in your body and plants have all the genes, okay? All your DNA. But each cell decides to only express some genes. Otherwise, all the plant cells will be exactly the same. The plant wouldn't be so unique looking. A human wouldn't have all these features. We wouldn't be so diverse and um, unique, okay? So each cell does something different. Now, when auction comes, it expresses different genes. And these genes are cell division and cell enlargement genes, okay? In addition, for the cell enlargement genes, um, it expresses something called elastin. Elastin sounds like elastic. So a gene for elastins will be made. Elastin is a little thing in the membrane of uh, these plant cells. And it makes the plant cell elastic or expandy. So as soon as more of these are expressed, the cell is capable of growing because it's not so rigid anymore. It is elastic. So when the cell grows, it can expand and get very big. Okay. So this is essentially the nutshell, in a nutshell, what you need to know about auxin. Not too uh, about plant growth, I mean, and um, plant hormones. So auxin is an example of a plant hormone. So it's not too much for you to know. There's not too much detail. If you're going into plant biology in university, you'll learn more things. But for high school level, this is what you need to know. So in, in, in by bending towards the sunlight, it, exp it makes the plant have... So if this plant were now to bend towards the sun, it will expose the sun to as much sunlight as possible, allowing it to do as much photosynthesis as possible and be the strongest, healthiest plant possible.